Mauritius has an exclusive economic zone. It's a vast extent of ocean. And according to the United Nations, Mauritius has special rights to the space. And so it can use marine resources to its benefit, which could include energy production from water and wind. Well, this is known as the ocean economy, something that is becoming increasingly important around the world. Joining us from Port Louis to talk about this is Milan Mitarban, who is the ambassador and permanent representative of the Republic of Mauritius to the United Nations. When I was researching uh, about Mauritius, and it's lovely to be engaging with so many Mauritians over the past few weeks, uh, it was interesting to see that your uh, access or your right to the ocean is amongst the biggest in the world. The numbers are quite extraordinary, nearly 2 million square kilometers. What do those rights actually give you? Well, indeed, uh, the different uh, maritime zones which come under the jurisdiction of uh, Mauritius are about a thousand times big, uh, uh, bigger than our landmass. And like all small island states, there are constraints to expansion of uh, the economy because of the size of our territory and also the size of our population. So what small island states can do is to look at the ocean for expansion of their economies. There are resources there. There are possibilities for uh, leisure, for transport. Uh, there are minerals. And what we require as small island states is a, is a shift in the mindset so that we don't consider ourselves as being only small states, but we consider ourselves as being potentially large ocean states. And we've also been used to thinking of ourselves as small islands with, without natural resources. In the case of Mauritius, we used to say that we don't have any resources except our people. But we need to think of the resources that we do have in the oceans. And to enable us to do that, to take advantage of that. What we are proposing is that there is an integrated uh, approach to all ocean-related activities, economic activities. And I must ins insist on the fact that we are talking about all ocean-related economic activities because these activities do not always take place on the sea, on the ocean. These can be onshore activities as well, which are related to the ocean. Milan, we know that there's an enormous amount of exploration uh, in the sea, in the ocean, for oil and gas. How well has the area that thousand times the size of Mauritius, which your country owns, how well has that been explored? Well, we uh, haven't really uh, carried out uh, exploration in our maritime zone so far. Uh, but this obviously is part of the ocean economy concept. And uh, we will have to ensure that we put in place the right uh, uh, regulatory and legal framework before we can start uh, exploration in our own zones. Uh, we will have to start um, building the ocean economy uh, on what we have been doing already. And that's traditionally, of course, fishing. Uh, Mauritius uh, also tried to develop itself as a seafood hub. Uh, so the, the, these will be uh, the uh, sectors which we will seek to consolidate and, and expand as we try to build uh, on, on new sectors, including uh, exploitation of uh, minerals uh, in, in the EEZ, but also on the uh, continental shelf. The fishing rights, do they all vest with Mauritius? Uh, sorry, I didn't get that. The, the fishing rights. In other words, all those fish that are in that uh, huge two million square kilometer area, does Mauritius own it? Yes. So if, the, if, if someone from a well, different part uh, of the world were to come through uh, and to start fishing in that area, they could presumably uh, fall foul of international law. Yes, under the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, as a coastal state, we have sovereign rights over fishing and other natural resources in our exclusive economic zone. Uh, so uh, the, the general rule is that 
there is a licensing regime for uh, ships, for fishing vessels from other uh, countries which uh, want to fish in, in the exclusive economic zone of any particular country. Uh, but when we talk of uh, licensing regime, we obviously also have to talk of the uh, machinery for surveillance. And this is really an area where we need regional cooperation, where we hope that we can work the countries in this region to ensure that there is proper surveillance of not only our maritime zone, but also the maritime zones of our uh, neighbours. Are you able to adjust the cost of those licences? Uh, what I'm getting at there is, is there sufficient demand from those who would like to fish in your waters that they can compete against each other? Yes, well, obviously we will have to remain competitive. Uh, we are still now in the process of uh, putting framework and regulatory framework for in our ocean. Uh, and we will uh, have to work out the fees for various activities as well. We haven't done that yet, but we, I can assure you that uh, Mauritius will, as it has done in other sectors, uh, make sure that uh, it remains competitive. And as far as oil and gas is concerned, have you had much interest from the oil majors in exploring? There have been expressions of interest from time to time. But in the absence of a proper uh, framework for uh, granting uh, authorization for, uh, to companies for exploration, we haven't really embarked on this yet. But uh, I'm sure that we will be able to do that when we have our ocean economy policy in place. We announced after the uh, national dialogue that took place over the last two days that the government will uh, publish a roadmap uh, around October this year which uh, will consist of both an action plan and an implementation plan on the ocean policy. And uh, the roadmap will not only provide for uh, the sectors, the priority sectors, which we can develop over the coming years, but also on all the uh, uh, legislative uh, uh, requirements, the uh, uh, fiscal regime, uh, all the incentives that uh, will be given uh, for uh, industries and uh, services operating as part of the, uh, of the ocean economy.